Searchers. Wait till you hear The Searchers by George Green. <laughs> Searchers is about two movies. Uh, the first, a, a John Ford film from 1956. The second, The King of Kings, a Nicholas Ray movie from 1960. And I tried to write the poem so you didn't have to see the movies to appreciate it. I don't know if I succeeded or not. And the Searchers. Hangovers help John Wayne evince deep torment in The Searchers. When he comes unglued while tracking the Comanches who've abducted Natalie Wood. With Jeffrey Hunter as his sidekick, he combs the empty wilderness until the trail revolves into an odd infinitude. The quest attains a sweeping cosmic grandeur as the wayworn pair return repeatedly in vista vision to bust up certain funerals and weddings while past the stone pavilions of the canyon Natalie Wood still pines, a captive squaw. Of course, she's later rescued and returned, and it's John Wayne who finally is forced to drift along the dreary plain below. And Jeffrey Hunter, much beloved of Frank O'Hara, went on to play the role of Christ, as well as anyone has, in King of Kings, where Nick Ray made him stay inside his trailer so he could smoke unseen by other cast members and extras would be awed by him when he came on the set. Jeff shaved his armpits for the crucifixion, knowing well the Lord must suffer an ideality, mounted high and gleaming on the cross, a waxed and buff Apollo crowned with thorns. It was the end, really, of Jeff's career, banished to foreign features and depressed, then suddenly dead at 43 in obscure circumstances having fallen down the staircase. Um, the next poem is called uh, Lord Byron's Foot. And uh, uh, as many of you know, Lord Byron had a club, club foot. Uh, and uh, for those of you involved in disability studies, I must say, before I get in too much trouble, this is a poem about compensation. Uh, Lord Byron's foot. That day you sailed across the Adriatic, wearing your crimson jacket, trimmed in gold. You stood there on the quarter deck, the glamour. But we were all distracted by your foot, your foot, your foot, your lordship's gimpy foot, your twisted, clubbed, and clumping foot, your foot. Well, Caroline went half mad for your love. But did she ever try to make you dance? No, never, never, never let that happen. No, never with your limping lordship's foot. Your foot, your foot, your lame and limping foot. Your limp and lumbering, plump and plodding foot. We see you poising, posing with your catamite, a GQ fashion spread from 1812. But one shoe seems to differ from the other. Is that the shoe that hides your hobbled foot? Your foot, your foot, your game and gimping foot, your halt and hobbled, clumped and clopping foot. And why did Milbank sue you for divorce? Twas buggery. I really do doubt that. It was your foot. <laughs> and everybody knows it. It's all we think about. Your stupid foot. Your foot. Your foot. Your clumsy, clumping foot. 
your limp and gimping stupid stubby foot. And after you had sw swung the house on, a fin is better than a foot, they'd say. Behind your back, they'd say, a fin is better. Meaning your lordship's foot was just a fin. <coughs> a fin. A fin. Your foot was just a fin. Your flopped and flumping foot was just a fin. And when you went to Cavalcina, mask with Leporello's list, only half male. What had they been remembering? What were your, I'm sorry, what were your friends all whispering about? What had they been remembering? Your foot? Your foot. Your foot. Your halt and hampered foot. Your hobbled, clubbed and clopping foot. Your foot. When Oliveri drew you on your deathbed, with laurel on your alabaster brow. He threw a blanket on your legs. But why could it have been to cover up your foot? <laughs> your foot, your foot, your pinched and palsied foot, your crimped and clumping, gimped, lumping foot. It's best if we just contemplate your bust. A bus by Torvaldson or Bartolini. And why is that, you ask? And why is that? So no one has to see your friggin' foot. <laughs> your foot. Your foot. Your clomping monster foot. Your foot. Your foot. Your foot. Your foot. Your foot. Thank you. Amy Holman. Thank you very much. Manuscript. Membrane is parchment, or so the words unite in seed of Middle English earth. Once, in experiment, a bunch of us wrote lines of poetry and magic marker on a naked man lying face down on some coats at the drawing center. Not quite erotic like the pillow book would be, but I did think of this man and his woman later sweating our words onto their sheets before enough showers could soak us censors. Not a dead sheepskin with gold leaf, but yet an illuminated text or breathing parchment. Forget where we started. This evening of written exquisite corpse took a turn past the original 1920s drawings on the gallery walls. Lines disembodied and suggestive, these exercises are like mad libs, only they bring us back to lyric, an unimaginable body made beautiful despite its frog legs and women's hands. Our bearded gentleman deferred to his girlfriend when his name was drawn, but she mocked, it's up to you. Lights dimmed to a filament darkness or protective tissue, he stripped swiftly with effortless moves, as if his clothes and modesty were just taped on. None of us budged at first, suddenly thought for a poem or dinner, but then advanced as a flock of shy, dumb sheep with indelible ink thoughts. I put my small nephew's fair fire in the trees below the man's left shoulder blade. No one wrote on his pale ass. We were told by our leader to read from him all at once, canceling all effort to create a body of work. He was just a color scrawl, and we as indistinct in voice as a restaurant crowd. <laughs> I'm glad my coat was not beneath his strange penis, nor my skin tickled 
by the tentative, slimy strokes of soaked felt. Eros and the muses had skipped out early, and when I reached the street, I saw the night had a brilliancy, like the first time I drank too much tequila and turned my head. All vivid and a little bit shiny. <laughs> Robert Bly um, that following spring at the Poets House Showcase, which used to be in April. And he uh, said to me, my favorite line of that poem, which was enough right there, um, was, when nobody wanted to write on his butt. <laughs> Something for the memoirs. That's my only appearance in the best man in history. Here's another poem. Let her go. Field open, bicycles lock. Every girl sees through the leaves, lured to the edge, mind open, body locked, running feet, beating heart, blue yonder. Can't every girl escape childhood in charge of herself, floor to be fawned over, a body she unlocks? If she missed being the field swayed by one small shoe, lock of hair in the back seat, body hidden under pines, at least not wholly a disruption of clues, how does she endure her hidden body ruptured? Every girl is bored looking for summer when it's disappearing, and every girl disappearing whispers in our ears, I do not beguile. 